So Robbie, first of all, if you just tell me uh, your impressions of the setup here at the XWA Trading School and the, and the students. Well, the setup is fantastic. It's um, multi-purpose. There's, there's a mat area downstairs and the ring here, and it's also very impressed with the um, with the stuntman type of uh, scenario. It's it, it's very complete. Um, in Leicester, I only have a mat, so. Uh, if my uh, if my students see this, they're going to be uh, a little bit they're going to be a little bit envious that you've got a ring and we haven't. No, but it's um, it's very good. The facilities are, are, are very impressed, and um, the students we've just done the first uh, the sessions, and um, they've been very very respectful. They've listened to everything, and ultimately they've tried. They've tried really hard, and that you know I set out this morning at eight o'clock, and. Um, it's been raining all the way up and you know it's, it hasn't been the easiest of journeys to make but it does make it more worthwhile when you've got people here who actually want to want to learn and that's it's very refreshing and it's nice to see what's the main piece of advice that you give to any aspiring young wrestler oh uh, how long's the tape um i think you need to find a place <clears throat> that is, and when I say a place, I mean a gym, a club, a wrestling school, that is reputable. Um, you have to see where where these schools take you. And obviously there's a promotion at the back of all this here. So straight away, there's a chance to go on a show, which is the, the ultimate thing for any aspiring kid is to have a live show and, and, and that adds to experience but also I would also anyone from England I would strongly advise and recommend being taught and, and, and devouring yourself in Britishness and if you come from Wales then obviously go down the Welsh road or Scotland or Ireland but you only have to look what's happening across the, the Atlantic where you can actually start to earn big money and I think everyone wants to earn money and ultimately a lot of the kids coming through want to go to WWE but I would um, to get started you need to go to a, 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 a reputable gym and also you, you need to find out who's teaching and what type of person where they've been what, what type of style they are <coughs> and ultimately whether you can learn from these people um, and when you do go, when you your first ever time that you come to a gym, like I've just told, I mean, there's some so many students down there been training for seven seven years, but it's always open, shut, open, and because you never you never learn anything when you're talking or when you're looking around at the back of the school, so that's um, that's very important, and also keeping fit is, is another very uh, important ingredient. When did you first wrestle in Morecambe and what's your sort of earliest memories of wrestling in Morecambe? Um, I, I, there's been so many places I've wrestled here. I mean, I, I remember we used to wrestle in like a big hotel at one stage. We used to wrestle at Pontins as well, mm. which that, that was a regular in, in 82. And also there was one of my favorite Favourite stories, I, I feel compelled, I must tell this story, um, was, I, obviously I never worked for Max Crabtree, but I worked for um, um, Bobby Barron's company, Worldwide Promotions, and uh, although, although I wasn't at this particular story, it's one of my favourite walking stories, um, Tony Francis and Peter Thompson came up to work on, I think it was the Sunday night, I think it was, there was a show in Morecambe on the Sunday night, so they came up with a couple of friends, <clears throat> and in those days, this was probably 82, you, you, could, you didn't know who you were on with, so the first you'd ever get, the first inkling as to who you were going to wrestle that night, is when you went through the, the theatre doors and you saw the poster. So. Tony Francis was, he's a lovely fella, but he was never any good, you know, to go on with it. So as they walk through, it's got John Naylor against um, Peter Thompson or um, Steve Fiore, as he used to wear. And it had, top of the bill, 
Tony Francis against Ray Steele. So Tony's face is going like that straight away, and he's got oh god. Oh. So they get in the dressing room. John Naylor goes on with Peter Thompson first, and he just absolutely annihilates poor Peter. And, he's, and like John Naylor's like like that big, and Peter's like a lot a lot bigger, you know, thicker and taller. So he, he, he just like what on Tom and Jerry when the dog when Spike gets gets uh, Tom and he whacks him all over the place, he bits of Peter. And he's just absolutely annihilated them. They've come back like that. They've got in the dressing room and all of a sudden Tony's gone, oh, oh, my angina. Oh, 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 I've got all oh, 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 He's really gone overboard with it, like faking, faking this heart attack. So they, they, they've gone like that. So they, 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 get, they get an ambulance and they have, he's gone, oh, gold mill on the cord. So his wife comes all the way up from Blackpool, takes him back to the what we thought was going to go to the local, local hospital. So Max Crabtree came in the dressing room and said, Peter, he said, Tony's had to go to the hospital. Can you go home and raise steel? <laughs> and as Peter sat there, he said, Max, I don't know if you know this, but the smallest man on the bill has just absolutely annihilated me and left body parts all over the ring. He said, he's British heavyweight champion. <laughs> they, had to, they had to put him in, in like a bin bag and they got him back to Blackpool. And they used to, we used to always go to this, there's a place on by Central Piers, a little hotel um, by the bus station, and there's a room at the back, and Mick Miller and all the boys used to always go for drinks. So, like, they've gone in the back, and as, as they get to, there's, like, really dim lights, Tony's at the back with a big brandy glass with, like, four quadruple brandies going, false alarm, lads! <laughs> but that's my favourite, Morecambe, because every time I go, even now, I know there's nothing much left of Morecambe, but I always remember that. But I can remember <clears throat> coming here quite quite a lot, and I've always got fond memories as a child because my father used to take us up here rather than go to Blackpool because Blackpool was more expensive to, to have a day out. But whether it was the poor man's Blackpool, I don't care. But I had so many happy ta happy days in, in Morecambe and then <clears throat> wrestling at, at the uh, the Carlton. Uh, I've got real. I, me I remember wrestling Mike Bennett, um, probably 83, 84, and um, getting the eye. My eye just came up like a pudding. And I think, I think I got a, a, I started getting a cauliflower deer here as well. Key Martinelli booted me in the ear, and it just come up like a tangerine. Um, my mother wasn't wasn't too keen on that, but I've I've always enjoyed coming up here, and uh, it's always been special place, even a couple of years ago when I came up for the XWA and I was sort of walking down the, the, the dark path, so to speak, I still thoroughly enjoyed it because I've got so many like happy memories. It always reminds me of Rocco and Jackie Robinson as well, doing that up, up on the pitch. And like the, the dome, you know, that was a, a real great place for me to wrestle. I think I started there probably in the first year when it was opened. I think Ori Williams used to run it back then. And uh, you just forget how many times that you, you come to a place and, and the different places. And I, I, as I say, like, I mean, what happened to Pontons? Whatever happened to that? Shut down. Ah. What, what is it? Is it a housing estate or something like that? It's uh, a sheltered accommodation for the elderly. Ah. I mean, we used to do an afternoon show there and it used to be packed. It used to be absolutely heaving. And for me, I mean, if I go back to, to all these places, most of them were tough crowds because they weren't as adapted and Americanized as what we are now. You know, you, you say you suck. If you'd have said that 30 years ago, you'd have been reprimanded. So, um, but you could do a lot more things in, in a sort of old-fashioned English way. But um, that's where I learned how to wrestle. That's where I learned how uh, my personality and my performance with the crowd. I, I learned it in the likes of Pontons. I learned it. Well, the car was a good venue. I'd, I'd like to see what, what you, you know, how, you, how you've done it and how, how you uh, how, how you run it. It'd be nice to, to come back one time and just, you know, for, for nostalgic reasons. Um, but yeah, I've, I'm not just saying it because I'm in Morecambe as well. I, I've had conversations with Greg before about when I was a kid and we used to come up to Morecambe for the day and even. I've just flummoxed a few of them downstairs by the, uh, the Lancaster Railway Station announcement. Lancaster. This is Lancaster. 
you know, get excited then. So nearly there. And just for the record, Morecambe had a haunted swing that that, that defied it. You're in a swing and the room would go round like that, but you think you thought you think it was the swing going round, optical illusion. But we used to spend hours on it. <laughs> That's me. That's me. Memoirs of uh, Morgan. <laughs>